I'm here at the studios of the Big Ten Network, talking with their lead anchor and my good friend Dave Revson. Dave's journey is a wonderful example of someone who discovered his calling and pursued his dream. When did you notice that you were interested in sports broadcasting? I noticed I was interested when I was about six. So I would literally turn down the sound on the TV, I would write down the lineups, and I would announce games in my room. That's kind of what I always wanted to do. Was there a reason why you didn't pursue a journalism degree and or a radio TV film degree? Yes, uh, that reason was my father. He felt pretty strongly that I, I should get some sort of a broad-based background educationally. When you graduated from Northwestern, what were your immediate plans? I thought I would go to law school. In the interim period of trying to decide what I wanted to do, I decided I didn't want to go to law school right away. And You got a job as an investment banker in New York. Why did you pursue that job? It was available. Honestly, I didn't even really know what bankers did. It was really a bad fit. In the back of my mind, I thought, I can't see myself doing this. And I always knew I wanted to be a sportscaster, but I wasn't really sure how to go about it or what to do. I had a high school friend who I was talking to who was working in small market television. And he was able to speak with his news director and I flew down there and uh, went well and he said, okay, next opening is yours. And then about two months later he called me. And this kind of feeling of, okay, well, let's see where this takes me. But I was also realistic in that, hey, this may not work out and if it doesn't work out, that's okay. I found my passion. I spent a lot of time like working on my resume reel, both when I was in Sherman and in the Quad Cities, and watching Sports Center and seeing what those guys did. The next move was to ESPN yes. News. Can you describe the feelings when that offer came in and you knew that you were gonna you were gonna join ESPN News? Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, to think that for 20 years, right, this is what I'd always wanted to do, and now I knew I was gonna get the opportunity to do it in some ways on the biggest stage possible. I vividly remember um, in one of the first few days I was there, they held a, a meeting for all the on-air people. And so I'm in this room and Chris Berman's there and Dan Patrick's there and Keith Olbermann's there. And, and you really got this feel like I, I really thought at some point they were going to come in and just say, hey, Dave, you know, this has all just been a big ruse, but we're going to need to ask you to leave now. You made a choice to come to the Big Ten Network right. where we are right now. Tell me about that move and, and what factored into that decision. I needed to explore what else was out there. I knew the Big Ten Network was launching. They had expressed some interest in me. And so, you know, well, let's take that next step and, and come interview. If you can imagine talking to yourself at the age of 22, 23, or someone who is like you were, what do you think you would, would, would share with that, that person? Don't let other people tell you what to do. You know, do what you want to do and we'll will make you happy. And you may not know what will make you happy, but go down the path that seems to lead you to the most happiness. Just be honest with yourself. Figure out who you are. The benefit of the happiness catalyst is to be able to say at the very beginning, what would make me happy? And I don't think you necessarily know that when you're 16 years old. You don't necessarily know it when you're 22. But I think you have a much better chance of getting it right if you're asking that question really early on. And that's where I think the happiness catalyst can really benefit. You.